Well, hello and welcome to Together Tuesday with John DeCecco and Trish DeCecco. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, we welcome all of our Centre Point Church family, both here in Australia and the Philippines, and friends that are watching. Uh, we welcome you to this Tuesday night, which we're excited about <laughs> because we have another addition to the family, and uh, we welcomed him home tonight. And uh, what was it like? It was awesome. Little Asha came home and he's very, very cute. Uh, we're trying to figure out uh, where he's come from because he's almost blonde. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, besides the grey beard, uh, we're very dark. Our kids are dark. So we have a little blonde, chubby, cute grandson. Yeah, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Asha Christian Rano. Yes. And um, how many pound or do you, do you know the kilos? I think it's around about 4.11 4. 4. or yeah, oh, 4.11 kilos yeah. and 9 pounds. So yeah. he's a big boy. 52 centi is it yeah, 52 52 centimeters. Is it 52 centimeters? So he's a long boy. And uh, we're just so um, glad to have him in our house. And, uh, you know, our topic tonight is um, relationship <laughs> uh, with children. We talk, we talk all um, type of relationships mm -hmm. in this program. But tonight we're specifically talking about um, having a relationship with big kids or grown-ups and navigating through that. And uh, we just hope that you can get something out of this again. This is from a perspective of um, the, I guess, the life of uh, Trish and myself, how we navigated through that. Again, as I say at every uh, program, definitely not perfect but some of the things that uh, work for us, and we're going to give you some of those things that didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you being able to take that on board, praying about that, and obviously having the Holy Spirit in your life, who is the greatest life partner, mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, together with him, you'll be able to uh, work all things together for good. Yeah because you love God and you're called according to His purpose. So we're excited about this program. And uh, right now we have um, grown-ups living with us. Yes, um, we do. <laughs> and there's a scripture we're going to talk about in Proverbs, and um, I've got another perspective on that, and I know Trish will be talking about that as well, but uh, I guess a lighter side uh, to that as well. But I think when it comes to living with uh, grown-up kids mm. or big kids, and again, the big kids, when you're a child, uh, when you're a parent, doesn't matter how old they are, they're still your kids. And um, I think the way to navigate an enjoyable um, relationship is the investment uh, in their lives when they're little kids. Yeah. So enjoyment with big kids is the uh, type and the quality of investment when they're little kids. And, mm. and I guess tonight we're going to be talking about that. And, and a scripture that does come to mind and is very famous when you do go to a seminar um, or, you know, some kind of retreat uh, or there is a talk when it comes to uh, children and uh, investing in them is Proverbs 22, 6, where it says, Train up a child in the way it should go, even when he is old. He will not depart from it. And I know a lot of people uh, take that as a promise and it's almost like, you know, a guarantee. But uh, the reality is it's, it's, it's from the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom. And uh, we want to try and talk around that tonight and maybe you can get something around that. But in, from your perspective, Trish, when, when you read that scripture, what does, uh, what does it say to you? Uh, well, me being very practical, um, I always read the New Living Translation, and that says direct your child onto the right path. Um, and we were very adamant about that when we were raising our kids, and that was across the board. That was in their faith, that was in their schooling, um, job choices, athletic, everything. We were, we were very much across their whole life with this scripture. And to me, this is really about um, directing and guiding your children to make good choices, good pathways. And if we teach them to make good choices, because they made the choice, when they get older, they won't depart from that choice. Because if we raise children that aren't independent and make all the choices for them, then as they get older, they're going to depart because we're not there making the choices for them. So therefore, they're going to fall down. 
So to me, this is a very practical scripture. It's very important um, that you instill this sort of confidence in your children. And this is where when they're little, you get alongside of them, they make a choice, you train them, you direct them, they make a choice and they might fall down and you're there to pick them up and say, that's okay, dust yourself off, get back on track. Mm. And like John was saying, and then when they get older, it's a joy to watch them because they're, they're, you've raised mature, confident children mm. and they're out there in life, they're kicking goals, they're making choices. They may not always be the right choices, but you're there championing them on from the sidelines. And if they need your help, they come, which they do. Um, but most of the time it's, it, it's good and we are just enjoying life mm. with them mm. because we kind of taught them to be independent, from from the get go, so mm. yeah, that that to me, I've taken it from a very practical mm. perspective. Yeah, and uh, you know, when they're old, they won't depart. Mm. But let me tell you, they, they're coming back. They're, they're back now. <laughs> Uh, they've all come back. Yeah, they've all come back at some time. And the thing is, and and this is the thing, um, you know, uh, even if we have a look at the uh, the Jewish culture, uh, mm. when they were given to one another in marriage, they spent a year um, with the family, and uh, they got to know one another. And I'm and I'm saying it would be probably uh, a difficult time if in the earlier years. Um, the investment wasn't put in. That one year together mm. in the same household would not be enjoyable. And we've found that the times that we've um, had our children back for whatever reason, uh, they've come back, whether they're building a house or, or time to uh, save money for whatever purposes mm. and plans that the, they uh, are goaling for, uh, we want to support them. And, and the time has been amazing. The time has been amazing. We're having a, a time right now. But I was reminded of this. It's because of the investment yeah. Um, we put in them as as children. I guess from from my perspective and um, my upbringing, um, you know, there's a little bit of regiment towards this, and um, I set up kind of like a training compound. We have like family <laughs> camp, and you know, a bit like uh, when um, people are preparing for a, a a fight or some tournament, they go away and have a retreat. They have a camp and they do all the training. Well, when it comes to children, that doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really doesn't. It, it might uh, be, le it leans over or it leans off as they, they get older. Uh, but in those early years, there is there is an investment. And, and you've got to work out how you're going to invest. And, and for me, it was a, you know, a bit like a, a training camp. And I had some, some things that I put in place. The first thing was instruction for us was vital. Yeah. To me, that was the vital content. It needed to be clear. Mm. Uh, the instruction needed to be, uh, simple. Mm -hmm. Come on, don't don't make it hard no. because we don't want them to fail. We want to give them instruction that they're able to yeah. uh, carry out. Yeah. So instruction is so so important because it it speaks of achievement. Mm. You know, when you give an instruction and uh, they achieve that, it's it's achievement. So it, it's 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 championing that instruction. So instructions need to be clear. There's mm. nothing worse than kids, um, you know, being left to their vices or being mm. left to do something when they don't understand the instruction so mm. the, the instruction at a very young age is a vital content yeah. so i encourage you to keep that clear the second one is dedication yeah. um, they need to know that you're dedicated to them yeah you know that dedication needs to be yeah. uh returned but they won't return that unless they know that you're invested that you're focused and it's quality time and i guess yeah. for today i just say this to parents put your phone away <laughs> i mean uh, that, that speaks volumes um i mean uh, you know, a child wants your attention when you give them your attention. I know we're busy, we work, and we all we have all kinds of things that we do. But in the time of your dedication, dedicate your time. Mm. It's about the quality of time that you spend. And I know that sometimes we use that as a cliche, but in reality, children, kids are looking at that time. They want your devotion. They want your Absolutely. dedication. They want your attention. I don't know about mm. you, but when you're talking to someone and then they go and reach for the phone or they're looking somewhere else, that I don't know if that frustrates you. It frustrates me. But you know, in a child, it leaves imprints. Um, mm. You might think, oh well, there's still they'll grow out of it. No, the reality is, is that's what you're sowing. So instruction, mm. dedication. The next one is is discipline. In other words, you know, your your words and your action um, equal the teaching that they're going to receive. Mm. So so discipline is is training. Mm. Um, you're training them. You know, you're training them in in how you. 
what you say and how you act. Um, again, it's not just what you say to them, it's how you speak to others, how you act in front of them. And again, it's not an act like um, you know, you're playing a role in a movie. This is the act of your natural um, character and personality, how you live around them. That is training them. Um, you know, uh, a Jewish child, uh, specifically a boy, um, up to the age of eight, uh, was weaned or was uh, carried by her mo mm. th the mother. Yeah. Uh, and then between eight and 12, was given to the father. Mm. And then at the age of 12, they needed to choose themselves a mentor or a rabbi oh. teacher. Yeah. So in actual fact, we are uh, those persons to our children and um, and then there's also youth pastors and that's why I'm so big on our, our youth pastors and I champion our youth pastors because they've got a tough job uh, because our kids when they go to youth they're looking at those youth mm. pastors those youth leaders as someone that they're looking to so they're actually even discipling our mm, children so yeah. you know churches that have a really good youth program youth leaders that are dedicated to them um, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's a great church to be a part of. So find a church where uh, people have a great um, youth uh, ministry, a great youth uh, mentoring program where, where young kids are, are, are being looked after. But ultimately, ultimately, it falls back on parents. You know, we can send them to school and we can think, OK, well, they're going to teach our kids. Well, they will academically. Mm. Uh, but let me tell you, life skills are going to be taught in the home. So that's what we call discipline and training, yeah? Um, example, and this is where I, I, I think is key. Uh, I call it parental reality, and um, we need to be that example. And the way to do that is to communicate, communicate regularly. Uh, communication is the key. And when I talk about communication, you know, I've seen some parents sit there and literally have full-on arguments and discussions with their children of two years old. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, we need to kind of put this into perspective. Uh, the older we get, the communication changes. Mm. But communication again and the example again needs to be real where they can actually um, hold what it is that you are communicating, mm. all right? So that needs to be real. Uh, we can't make it so high and falutin and out of range that they can't get to it. Um, it needs to be something that they live with and uh, can understand. So those examples need to be real and that communication needs mm, to be uh, so something true. that's open. And the last one is love. And this is what wraps all of this up because this is the reason why mm. we give instruction, dedication, mm. we, we train and we give these examples because it's the why. And our kids will know that. Um, they'll know your your spirit, the spirit behind why you do what you do. Um, again, we're not just giving them a task to get out the way. You know what I mean? They they they're your children, um, and they're there to be uh, trained, instructed, uh, dedicated, and giving examples to. So it's a spirit that you carry that will determine how they will receive your instruction. The, you know how they'll they'll be dedicated to you whether they'll take on the training and the discipline. Mm. So, so love is the key. And I'm just finishing on this, for me, um, the best uh, parental training is um, going via the inspiration pathway rather than the co coercion pathway. Now, I, I just want to qualify that. There are some times that you've got to persuade your children. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is what I'm going back when we're talking about communication. I mean, when they're three and four, um, you know, sometimes inspiration doesn't even uh, register. So we've got to go the coercion. We've got to go this persuasion uh, way. But when they're getting in their teens, it's like Trish was talking about, it's getting them, it's, it's inspiring them so that they're making those decisions. Yeah. You're, not, you're not letting them make life and death decisions. No where, you know, it's going to harm them. You're, you're getting them to make decisions that, you know what, if they fall over, it's okay. They're going to get scratched. It won't be fatal. So these are some of the areas that as we are dealing with our little kids, so we can enjoy them as big kids, yeah. it's in these little 
kid years that we've got to really uh, put in the work. You know, a bit like now. You know, it is hard. Obviously, we're in COVID-19, we're in lockdown, and families do need to get involved in education. Uh, thank God. Actually, my wife was doing it while Jesse was in hospital having Asha. Two days. Yeah, it was only That's two enough. days. That's, That's fine. Enough. <laughs> but this is where, where I'm talking about. This is what needs to happen. And we can't just say, you know, do it yourself, um, you know, when they're in grade prep or one, mm. uh, because they're not going to get the most out of what yeah. they're doing. So, yeah. again, it takes time and it's going to take um, some kind of regime that you put in place. We call it, you know, family camp, the Checo camp. <laughs> um, and we laugh about it now, but, you know, Gee, gee, I made plenty of mistakes. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I didn't. But um, when I look at our kids now, and I'm only getting feedback from others because, you know what, we're one-eyed. Uh, <laughs> like we said, we're Collingwood supporters when it comes to our kids. But you've got to listen to feedback from others. Mm. What are they saying about uh, your grown-ups and your children? Mm. That's really where you, you've got to hone into. Mm. Um, so, Trish, when it comes to, you know, dedication and energy um, as a mum with, with, with our kids, where, where were some of the areas that uh, you put some, some energy um, in? Well, I, as you were reading out that list, I, I have to say that my job rearing the kids was quite easy because um, John gave very good instruction. So for me, all I had to say was, what did Dad say about that? And that was enough for them to, you know, get it, rectify themselves. Um, one of my kids was a little bit more stubborn than the other, so I'd make him ring his dad. And then he knew that he knew that he was in trouble. Um, when it came to dedication, we were so, well, not me. I was home rearing the kids. John was flat out in ministry and would maybe come home for two hours of an evening, always home for dinner. And in that time, he was on. He was exhausted, but he was on. Uh, discipline, he meant what he said. He said what he meant. The kids, there was no grey areas. So again, my job was very easy. Um, example, he lived what he said. And, and the kids respected his discipline because they knew that, that he loved them. So I'd have to say that my job disciplining the kids was, 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 wasn't that it was easy but um, I think John established an order. We talk about that camp. There was, there was definitely an order in our house. It wasn't um, a discipline ranking. You know, the kids weren't living in fear, um, although they did fear their dad. It was a respectful fear. Um, so I, I really didn't have to work that hard. We were, I was consistent in that I pulled them up if they went against an instruction from their dad, I was very diligent at consistency. I think consistency is the key to disciplining your children, to rearing them, to teaching them, training them. Um, so, so what was the question? I don't think I answered no, it. No, you did. You said, oh, what, I did. What, what, was your, what, was, what was your uh, part in, in, in dedication? What, what were some of the things? That, my, uh... my role, what worked for us, mm. this is now us, mm. what worked for us was me um keeping dad's rules because that worked i saw it worked i liked it and therefore we kept it going mm. and it worked in our family it established um a beautiful godly order um there was always peace in our home um we didn't argue in front of the kids or we really didn't argue we didn't argue with our kids and our kids didn't really argue with each other. Then, like we said, they're not perfect. They're not angels. But um, I liked the order that John put in place. And therefore, I, what's the word, I suppose? I kept it. Carried it. I carried it. Mm. So, yeah, for me, I put my effort into maintaining the peace mm. and, and the law and order. <laughs> without the order. I mean, without the law, sorry. Um, it was just a nice, our house was a nice home to live in because mm. the, the boundaries were clear um, and the kids knew if they crossed them, there were consequences. And, um, you know, we, we, we've testified, not on this show, but in the past with other people, our boys as teenagers would do things as boys do and they would ring their dad. 
and tell them, you know, because, mm. and tell him because, yeah, they knew um, and they did it because they wanted to get it right. So that's, yeah, that, that was how our household ran and, yeah, I loved it. Cool. So, so, you know, a lot of that stuff that Trish talked about, we did talk about that behind closed doors. Yes. So anything, and, you know, when she said we didn't argue, you know, we did, but not in front of the children <laughs> because United Front is powerful. Yeah, you know, the Bible powerful. says where there's unity, he commands a blessing. Yeah. At the end of the day, she didn't agree with all the stuff I said, uh, and that's fair enough. It's her prerogative, and mm -hmm. there were times that we spoke about that, and we needed to uh, because, you know, maybe I was just going too right-winged mm -hmm. or left field. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that needed to be, come back a bit because, uh, again, always would honour, never dishonour me in front of the children. Mm. And uh, vice versa. So at the end of the day, she would say, hey, John, you know, if, if this keeps going, I don't know if I can carry this. So we need to, we need to sort this out. Mm. So, again, there is that uh, collaboration, mm. but, again, the united front. And, and just going back a little bit, as they're growing up, into their teens, um, the way of training is through inspiration. Mm. That takes energy. It yeah. takes dedication. Yeah. It's not easy, and that's yeah. why we kind of default to the comfort mm. of um, not dealing with inspiration, just with coercion and that persuasion, you know, if you don't, because it, 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 it's, it takes energy to discover a child's natural desires, mm their natural abilities and what they're good at and then encourage a pathway for them to follow that. Yeah. And uh, we did that and allow them to now take their behavior on that pathway and develop it accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, but to do that, you got to spend time like yeah. any relationship. And I think sometimes what we do with our children, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, let's have them, let's, let's put them through the sausage machine of school. And you know what, once they're in uh, secondary school, that's when we'll start to, you know, get a little bit mm -hmm. close to them because yeah. we can hang out with them. No, the reality is, is that those early years are the years where yeah. they can, they get close to you. Yeah. Uh, because it's it's in those times, you know, those camping times, those going mm -hmm. away times yeah. that you you spend with them. Um, you know, you know, some I've spoken to a family where that son remembers only once, but once was enough mm. uh, for that dad to take them away camping for that weekend. It's it's a memory that they've held on to, and you know, for them that represents dad loving and caring and uh, investing mm. in relationships. Mm. So um, you know to to discover these desires and abilities, it takes dedication and energy from your behalf. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, we need to invest in. And, you know, the Bible does say train up. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to train up? To me, it means like to narrow in on. Mm -hmm. You know what? To, to get a hold of your kids to, because they're all individuals. We have three yeah, and they're individually different. different. Yeah. Uh, so, so narrow in on them and train them up, you know, not down. Uh, train them mm. up in the way that sh they should go. So it's about providing a pathway mm. for them to develop disciplines, yeah. for them to develop disciplines. Mm. So as much as we're disciplining them, giving them training, they've got to develop their disciplines that they're going to find and discover for their own way. Yeah. Um, again, we weren't producing a sausage factory <laughs> kids, um, although we treated them uh, equally with our love. But then that love represented differences in in their lives. So um, for for me, this development is really uh, rings true when I watch something like um, the Discovery <laughs> Channel. You know, when you're watching Discovery Channel and you're seeing how our animals move around their habitat, and especially uh, David Attenborough. I mean, he's a classic. I, I'd listen to it. I can listen to his voice all day, every day. And one of the latest shows, because of COVID nineteen, we seem to be watching a lot of documentaries. Um, the latest one, he was. Uh, we were watching how an eagle, a mother, was um, teaching um, her little eagle to fly and fend for itself, and you know, to move from a branch to another. And uh, it, it took months for this to happen. But then eventually, uh, that eagle had to find its own wings, mm. had to find its own air. But it, be, it, was, it was taught how to flap its wings by the time, with the time that it was spent uh, with the mother in the nest. Mm. So this nesting period is so, so important. Mm. 
Uh, it's not just about providing uh, the natural things, which is, you know, obviously food and finance and, and uh, you know, roof over their head and, and making sure, you know, they got clothing and education. But it's, it's, it's the nurturing that's so, so important in all of those things. Mm. Um, we can't just leave them to that. So, Trish, if we just move on a little bit because we are running out of time. Um, with regards to discipline and punishment, mm -hmm. what's your... What's your view or your kind of description? Because they are two different things. Mm, yeah. Well, discipline is providing guidelines, um, whereas punishment is purely you've done the wrong thing and now you're going to be punished for it. So I say if you're constantly punishing your child, then they're not getting what it is that you're trying to teach them. Mm. So what you need to do is you need to go back to that checklist that we were talking about and see if your instructions are clear do they can they see that you're dedicated to them mm. um, are you disciplining them correctly is the discipline worthy of the of the wrong that you think they've done are you being an example are you asking them to do something not to do something that maybe you're doing mm. hmm. Uh, and do they know that they know that they know that you love them? Mm. Because then you won't have to punish them. Mm. You will be disciplining them, meaning you will be providing guidelines for them and they will be flourishing within those guidelines. You know, children need boundaries. Children without boundaries, especially the younger they are, are out of control and they are actually screaming for your attention. Mm. They are actually saying, help me. True. I am out of control. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. I'm all over. They, they're screaming for your love, your attention, your guidance. Punishment, you know, the smack or the bathroom, or whatever, doesn't help that child. They need to know that you're there for them. Mm. These are, these are the, the parameters of how we do life. And you know what? They will actually flourish mm. in that environment. So yeah, I'm big on discipline not so much on the punishment. Well, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to Trish and John on Together Tuesdays. We're talking all things relationship in dealing with or living with grown-ups uh, and the way we live with them um, and enjoy that life is dependent on the quality and the time that we yeah. invested in them Very as much. little kids. So we're talking about discipline and punishment. And for me, they're entirely two different things, and Trish explained what they were. But for me, um, those who are trained or have been disciplined have a lower percentage of being punished mm. uh, because they've, they've been instructed, they've been trained. So they have a lower percentage of being punished as those who are only punished. And I'd like to suggest to you that those who are only punished uh, is because of maybe the lack of discipline, uh, the lack of training. So therefore, they don't know. So that's therefore, right. you are punishing them for things that they don't know. And, not clear and to me, that's yeah. one. Yeah, well, yeah, one of the ways you know a child is not really being trained. Mm, that's right. Um, and when Trish and I ran a, a youth group many moons ago, um, <laughs> yeah, we found that there were a lot of teenagers um, that were being punished and, and even physically. Uh, being um, disciplined uh, because they weren't being trained. Mm. They were just being uh, punished. Mm. Um, and, and for me, it, it takes energy to train. Yeah. But what happens is, is sometimes we just put our energy in punishing. Mm. In other words, uh, you know, we don't spend time in the area of discipline, but so we just relax that. But then it just... Uh, boils up and then bang out mm. comes the punishment mm. out comes mm. the the mm. yelling screaming or wh right. however you dish out your punishment mm. so for me um really the discipline is the key and that's why it's the key because it but it takes energy and dedication it's hard work there's no <laughs> doubt about it it's it's hard work but you know what there are some parents and um, again, they give their children freedom prematurely, yeah. you know, yeah. to go out and create, to go out and find themselves and express, express themselves. themselves. And Perfect. we are not against that, <laughs> mate. I am all for that. But equally, at least, equally spend time investing in some training, in yeah. some disciplines yeah. so Maturing that they can, them. yeah, that's right, Maturing so they can them. join. Yes 
that creativeness to a foundation. Yes, that's it. You know, to 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 equip them so that yes. they can have some some basis of creativity mm -hmm. that's actually going to be foundational mm -hmm. for the future. Yeah. Because if we're all creative mm -hmm. without any discipline. any discipline, gonna it's it's going to it's going to yeah. be wild. And this yeah. is what I'm saying. Sometimes parents can just let them go and be free, you know? Just go and discover yourself at 3 years old. It's not going to happen. Uh, you know what? We're going to have nappies uh, up against the wall and nice uh, brown <laughs> paint happening everywhere. Oh, but they're just discovering mm. themselves. Yeah, they are. Mm. And now you go and clean it up. So at the end of the day, there's got to be disciplines, training, and there's got to be some good habits put in place. Mm. And you know what? I noted down here, we all dream for our kids. Yeah. We need to dream for them. But then intentionally, we need to train them. Yeah. Okay, so dreaming... And also training, to me, go hand in hand. Otherwise, we can dream for them. But then if we don't train them, we're going to set them up for failure. And it's not a prophecy of doom. It's a reality and a fact of history. That if there's no training, as Trish said, there's no boundaries. There's no parameters that they know, okay, well, this is our safety. Don't see it as a boundary to hone, keep them in. Uh, don't, don't, don't see it as, you know what, it's a restriction. You're, we're restricting our children. No, you're creating a safety net. You're creating parameters. You know, and the Bible talks about the shepherd had a pen, had a sheep's pen, and he would keep them in the pen so that the wolf, when he came, he couldn't get in there. And the reality is that sometimes we can let our children out. We can let our children uh, go to their own vices when they're still children. The reason why they're children and they're called children is because they're still children. They're not mature. When they're, they're babies, they think like a baby. Uh, as they're getting older, their, their mind starts developing with what you've input, what they've seen in the world, and they begin to develop their own vices. And you know what? By the time they're 12, you know, some psychologists will tell you it's pretty well set so yeah. these years are so so important mm. so that you can enjoy them and they can be a joy to others who they meet so when it comes to you know the word testing <laughs> what do you what do you um what meaning do you put to that word test when you know you you put your children to the test mm, yeah I, there's a negative to testing um i don't know i i don't like to think we test our children um yeah I, I don't know i'm not probably the good one to talk on that because i'm more of a um yeah i don't know you you talk about that one and then i'll i'll add in okay so yeah. so for me t testing it, it depends what school you come yeah, from that's right uh whether you're old school and you're testing people to <coughs> to find out what their weakness is or to me, when you're testing someone, you're finding out a perspective on what their strengths are. Uh, you know, we're not catching people out. Come yeah, on, we, we don't right. want to catch. Yeah. We're not. We're not going around. That's not the spirit. Yeah. Remember, we talked about why we do what we do. We do it because we love them and we mm. want to see them mm. uh, obviously develop a pathway for success uh, in the way that they should go. We're not there to trip them up. You yeah. know, and uh, the horrible stories you hear of uh, kids and like I said when we ran youth ministry the story you know my dad does this just to catch us out yeah. and he and he tests us to see if we fail and he then he tells us how you know bad we were and how we're not going to make it and and again so to me testing mm. is vital and it needs to be intentional and mm. it needs to be um, what's the word I'm using? Yeah, I don't it, like the word. It's, 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 it's it, something No, that's no, fine. It's, te it's testing. It, it's, it's showing, it's putting them on a pathway where you know that they're able to achieve and by testing them, they're testing themselves to see that they are able to do what it is that you're getting them to do. So you're not putting the bar so high that they can't uh, take what it is or they can't reach what it is that you're putting in front of them. It's, it's there to show them actually what their strength is it's showing up their strength and this is what i'm saying sometimes we need to really uh understand and get a meaning of that word mm. testing so yeah. that's what i'm talking yeah. about i know okay. that might scare you honey yeah i, I yeah. never tested our yeah. kids <laughs> punishment and testing uh, no. my, my wife isn't no. one to um handle because i guess you know it all comes up with our upbringing yeah that's right exactly um, and how we yeah. were disciplined and yeah. punished yeah. And uh, yeah, if you've got a few hours, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're probably, we're running. Uh, we're very much running at a time. time. But, and um, we have a guest who wants to come on the show. Do we? So you just quickly finish off. Okay. 
let's let's bring the guest in. Um, so shall I get him in? Yeah, you can okay. go grab him. No, no, no. Um, you know, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because I've heard parents say things like, you know, my kids are such high maintenance. Well, let me tell you something. That's true. And they probably are high maintenance. But here's the thing. We decided to deal with our kids' high maintenance so that they would be low maintenance yeah. for others. Yeah, we very much did not want okay. painful children. High maintenance? Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to say true. But we yeah. chose to take on their high maintenance. Uh, we chose to take them on so that then they would be loved socially and they would be accepted in social circles. Now I'm told, like I said before, people come up to me and say, oh, you you know, your kids are great. They're awesome to hang around. They're so easy to talk to. They're just really good, no fuss, low maintenance. And I'm saying to them, I am sure they are. And it didn't just happen. Let me tell you, this bald head did not just happen. Uh, it, it, boys, not it, it took a that lot of, boys. it took a lot of, uh, input while they Sorry, were boys. little kids, you know, <laughs> hearing parents say things like, I didn't sign up for this. Um, where is my alone time? I'm over it. Well, let me tell you, yeah, you can say that after 12 or 13 years and even then keep on going and you might feel like this, but these are the years of your investing. This is the time that we're going to look to God. And you know what? He's got angels that will give charge over us. And let me tell you, if you're a parent, uh, ask God for angels to help you. Because um, you can't be everywhere your children are. And we need to call on the angels. The Bible says that they're, they're ministering spirits that has been sent forth to minister. But yet they're looking for you to give them instruction and to help you. So as far as I'm concerned, it was in those little kids years that uh, we invested in the highs and lows. Uh, in the the Checo workshop, there was a <laughs> workshop called the Checo, and we we regularly brought them in for grease and oil changes, and maintenance. And uh, you know we looked after that maintenance, and that gave them the foundation to be able to, you know, f uh, build on that. And now they've got their own families, they're building their own families, yeah, and they are. Right. They're so good to doing be right. with. I mean, you know, I don't know what it would be like for us to uh, be living with our or for our older children now with, you know, three kids living with us, if we did invest in them yeah. as um, younger kids. And you know what? I, I hear stories all the time when you've got your grown-ups that are living in your home and it's like, you know, just a constant butting of mm -hmm. heads. Yeah. And the reality is, is that, you know, at some point there may have been, um, you know, a, a breakdown or a, or a lack of investment. It's not too late. Start to invest now. Yeah. You know, start to invest. You know, uh, although those instructions might be small because you know what, they are of age over 18, uh, but they're living in the same roof. You know what, they still need to abide uh, to some instruction. That, you know, you've got to dedicate yourself to them and again, be clear uh, and, and be an example to, uh, to them. So, in finishing, is our guest coming on? I believe so. Okay. Are we here? In finishing, um, you know, parents, I want us to really understand this, that you can be influencers for good and for God. And um, f as far as I'm concerned, it's in those early years that you've got to uh, put in the work or what I call the maintenance uh, and the general uh, workshop, uh, like a car that goes in a workshop. You've got to make sure that you look over um, every part of that car, you've, you've got to look into your life uh, of your children. Um, and as you do that, um, you, you need to call on the problem. You know, there's nothing worse. We had a, an issue in one of the houses that we were living in once and we called a maintenance guy to come around and you called them and called them and they wouldn't come. There's nothing worse than that. Okay, there's nothing worse than uh, your children calling on you and you're not there. And you're there physically, but you know what? In your headspace, you're not. And uh, this is what happens uh, in the time that you spend with your children. You need to give your time and your quality to them. So that's the real maintenance time. That's the real maintenance period that uh, we're talking about. So that when the, the training is done, it's not a band-aid effect. Okay? It's not a band-aid effect. 
Hello, <laughs> welcome to Asha. This is Asha and uh, our son in love, Stephen. Say hello, Asha. <laughs> We're so in love with this young boy. He's beautiful. And we are so glad that uh, he's living with us in our home. So as we do say goodbye, we're going to say goodbye. I'm going to just um, ask Pastor Trish if you could just pray Amen. and uh, then we can uh, go and enjoy Asha. We thank you for being a part of the program. Thank you for all the hearts, the likes, the comments. Uh, we love coming to you on Tuesday nights with Together Tuesday. So I'm just going to ask Pastor Trish to pray. Amen, Lord. We just want to dedicate this time to you. We want to pray that the words we've spoken, uh, that we've invested into the lives of our listeners and viewers, and that through your Holy Spirit, you'll just impart wisdom and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank so you for from the Decheckos and, and the, the Renos. new Renos, we say goodbye and God bless. <laughs>